This is where faith comes in. The same way that we don't see Jesus, but we believe in him is the same way that you have to believe in yourself. That when you're not feeling good or you're feeling lonely or you're feeling scared or you're feeling anxious, that is your lower self. You have to have faith even when outer things in your life hasn't changed. Like, for example, if you're sad, you still got to walk with your head all high, your chest up, your shoulders back. If you are uncertain of yourself you still got to walk with confidence because that is who you truly are but if i walked around all scared and sad that oh i'm sad now i don't give a fuck about none of that i'm not walking like that i'm him i don't need anyone to make me feel whole because why would i give that power to someone else to make me feel whole why i have god with me he didn't create us for that All right, my boys. <clears throat> so this video is about why seeking external validation or needing external validation is killing you and killing your divine self. Your divine nature is to love yourself from within. And once you're able to love yourself and appreciate yourself for everything, you are then able to go love other people. But by needing them to compliment you, your dress, the way that you smell, the way that you look, all of that, you should already be fulfilled from within. So needing them to compliment you consistently day in and day out in order for you to feel good, you need a compliment from someone. You need someone else to tell you that you look good or something like that. You should look into the mirror and know that you look good or feel good about yourself, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're fat, you're ugly, you're skinny, whatever it is, you need to learn to love this vessel from within. You need to learn how to love it from within yourself. You know what I'm saying? We are our souls, but we only have one human vessel. I can't look into this mirror and Justin Bieber comes up across my face or something like that, you know what I'm saying? I can't look into this mirror and see um, motherfucking Michael B. Jordan or some handsome model or something. I look into the mirror and I see Patrick. I am proud of Patrick. I love Patrick with everything in me. So Patrick doesn't need anyone else to make him feel happy or to make him feel sad or to make him feel whole. You see what I'm saying? I feel Patrick is him. So that is how I view Patrick. And that's how everyone else views Patrick because he loves himself. And needing someone else to make you feel good is probably the worst man-made disease that you can possibly get. Thinking about like relationships and past relationships I've been in and most people that I see as well, it's like they put their whole heart into this person. That if they're not with this girl, they can't feel fulfilled. They don't feel good about themselves. They basically are dead. They're like, I can't live without this girl. Notice what you're saying. And another thing I want to talk about in this video is that the words that you say are powerful. I need you to understand that. Think about that. You said, I cannot live without this girl. She's the best girl I ever had in the world. She's the best girl in the world. And without her, I don't feel good. Listen to what you're saying. Once you tell yourself a lie a good amount of times, that lie becomes the truth because you feel it's the truth. It's the emotion that you feel. So by that emotion, you will think that this girl is the best girl in the world. You just made that disease within yourself that you can't live without this girl, that you're nothing without her. Like, think about that. I heard a lot of people say that and I'm like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Like people always talk about curse words and shit. Let me go over that really fast. People talk about like the word curse words, like fuck, shit, you know what I'm saying, bitch, whatever. That's worse than a curse word, I swear to God. Like, you saying I cannot live without someone is worse than a curse word. People aren't just woken up by this. They're, they're not conscious to this. I need you to understand that. You, they are not conscious of this. That is a spell that you're putting within your brain so that whenever you think about this person, you cannot live without her. You know what I'm saying? That's worse than saying fuck. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a beam. It's worse than saying fuck. It's worse than calling someone a bitch. I don't care what anyone says. I can't live without this person or I need this person to feel fulfilled. Nah, none of that. Do not tell yourself that. That is what you will project and that is what the world will bring to you. That you can't live without this person. That you're gonna be sad because she left you or you're uh, depressed or anything like that because... You know what I'm saying? You don't have that person. And obviously, after breakups, you're going to feel a certain type of way. Like, I'm not going to tell you that, like, I got broken up today after, like, a 10-year relationship. And I'm, like, the most happiest dude in the world. Of course not. But I won't instill more things to hurt me, to put me down, that I can't live without this girl. Or, you know what I'm saying? She was the best girl in the world. Like, nah, I'm not, I don't care who it was. I'm... I don't care who it was. You see what I'm saying? But needing someone else for external validation is killing you. Do you see what I just did there? I put myself in the shoes of someone saying that I need someone or that I need someone to make me feel happy. You have yourself. You have God. There's no one else. If you do not love who you are, 
in the mirror and don't acknowledge how great you are, no one will do it for you. It is very rare. You know what I'm saying? And since I'm able to acknowledge how great I am and I know who I am and I love who I am, I'm then able to raise other people. You know what I'm saying? Like people like my family members, you know what I'm saying? Because people aren't conscious of this. I thank God that you watch this video because now you're going to watch what you say. Never say anything that's going to limit you. I need you to understand that. When Justin Bieber said, never say never, I will fight till forever. Yo, I really believe what he's saying. Don't say never that you can't do this or something that's going to limit you. I understand what he means. I understand what a lot of these people mean now. These are spells that you put within yourself and that you instill in yourself. Your subconscious mind can't tell a joke. Even if you're joking about like, I remember a lot of people saying, I ain't that stupid. Or me, even me, I used to be like, I ain't that stupid. That's sending to my subconscious mind that I'm stupid, but I am not that stupid. So I am stupid. You see what I'm saying? Patrick's not stupid. Patrick is great. He's whatever he thinks he is. You see what I'm saying? Needing someone else to make you feel whole is it's like a disease. I need you to understand that that's a disease that you made within yourself because you need someone else to tell you that you look good or that you need someone else to validate you in order you to feel good about yourself or compliment you. I don't need none of that. I look into the mirror. I look at, I'm looking at me right now. I'm like, damn, you see what I'm saying? Like I'm lit. You got to be able to learn to love yourself and I'll be completely honest with you guys. You know what I'm saying? If I was 300 pounds and I look into the mirror, I will still manipulate my mind to still love who I am because it's still me. But I would work my absolute ass off to look better and to achieve the dream body that I always wanted to be. That's where a lot of people fall from is that they don't want to put in that work. Patrick puts in that motherfucking work. You see what I'm saying? He's going to lose the weight. He's going to gain the muscle, whatever it is, whatever goal he has in his mind, he's going to accomplish you see what i'm saying even how i'm talking about myself in the third person's point of view i'm still putting it up as higher that he will accomplish anything that he puts his mind to i know him i does that i am him i am <laughs> i i am what i say i am even if i was 300 pounds i'll still learn to love all the good qualities of me you know what i'm saying but still having to put in that work to achieve that dream physique but once you become fulfilled and whole and you don't need anyone to feel a certain type of way you will feel great from within. You will show love to people. You will uplift people. I don't like people saying that shit around me. Like, think about how much people come around you saying, like, oh, I can't make this shot. Like, even something as subtle as that in basketball, I can't make this shot. Like, I don't even, I don't want to hear that shit. Like, yo, I make whatever I shoot. You see what I'm saying? And even with that confidence, it's a bit delusional because every shot that I take, I do not make. Obviously, you're going to miss some shots. But it's like, you're more confident even if you shoot more shots. Like, every time you shoot that shit, it's going in. So, it's a win-win situation whenever you see yourself in higher lights or a greater self because you're able to go show love to people. Also, when needing validation, you have to realize you are one with the divine nature of God. You don't need anyone. When you're more focused on yourself, you'll attract all other people. Good friends, good people, once you change who you are from the inside. You know what I'm saying? Even when people are coming around my way saying, I can't do this, or I'm depressed, or I am sad. I'd be like, yo, don't say that, bro. Trust me. Like, don't say that. It's not good for the body. It's not good for the soul. Like, even you saying it is giving it power. You're acknowledging it. You know what I'm saying? Even if I was sick, I would still say, Patrick's feeling better. Or he's going to feel better after he gets some sleep. And he gets some sleep and he feels better or something like that. Even if I wake up and I'm not feeling better, I'm not allowing my projection of the world of me still feeling somewhat sick affect me. You have to live in delusion for a good amount of time. I need you to understand that. It is delusional for a lot of atheists, right? Atheists don't believe in God. So I'm going to give you a perfect example. In order to have faith, you have to, you know, you got to have faith and believe what you don't see, right? So people would say God isn't real because I've never seen them. Simple as that. We know God is real from all of the past stories, all the texts, all the historic things that Jesus has done. We know he's real. But since this person can't see him, he doesn't have faith in him. So he doesn't believe in God. So no matter how you feel or how you view whatever, we're living in a delusional world because God isn't real for some reason. But in my world, he is real. Even though I don't see him, I can't talk to him. I can't feel him. He's inside of me. And that's my belief system. So God is real. So no matter what he says, I don't give a fuck what he says. God is real. I believe in Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? That is considered delusional in someone else's eyes, right? So you're going to have to live in delusional, you know what I'm saying, point of views for a good amount of time anyways. If you're religious, you are somewhat delusional because you think some guy came and healed the blind or something like that, right? Like how Jesus had Peter walking on water and he walked on water and he fed 4,000 people with a couple loaves of bread and, and some fish. That sounds delusional, right? No matter how... Christian you are, I need you to understand that, or how religious you are, 
that sounds delusional and I understand it, but I still have faith in God, even though I can't see him, even though I wasn't there to like hear about it or I wasn't even there to see it. I still believe in it. You know what I'm saying? So you have to believe in yourself regardless of how you feel. So that is when you go into your emotions. Emotions are very hard to contain. I need you to understand that when, if a girl that you dated for 10 years, me, myself, if a girl that you dated for 10 years came across you right now and said, we breaking up, it's over. You're going to feel some certain type of way. I don't give a fuck who you think you are. You see what I'm saying? You're going to be like, damn, like, like you're going to feel some certain type of way. So emotions are very hard to contain. You're lustful, for example. That's a perfect example. You are not yourself when you're lustful. It's like your lower self takes over and you are like an animal. This was, This is what leads guys to have sex with girls who are like 300 pounds. I don't understand it. But that's the extent of your lust. That is not you because once you bust that nut, you like, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So your emotions will infiltrate who you are. It's like when you're lustful, it is very hard to control. But if you're able to control your lust or control your emotions, you become very powerful. So when you are feeling lonely or you don't feel the best or you feel as if you don't look the best, that is your lower self talking to you. That is not you. Or you need someone else to make you feel fulfilled or happy. That's not you, dude. I'm telling you this right now. That's not you. That is your lower self trying to infiltrate you. You ever seen those shows where they got like Satan on this side and they got like Jesus on this side and Jesus is always trying to uplift you while this side is trying to like lower you? That is you. That is us. There's like two sides of us and that's the lower self that when we are in those moments, I need you to understand how hard those emotions are. That when you're with a pretty girl and... Even my point of view, I'm laying up with this girl who smells so good. She looks good. <sighs> how hard it is to control that lust, bro? Do you know how hard? Are you smelling her? You just like, damn, I would, yo. Like, it's going to infiltrate you. But if you're able to control yourself, that is the real man. That is you. You controlling yourself is who you are. That's the real higher self. And if you give in to the lust, like on the people on my steamer at your heads, if you give in to the lust... That is going to be your lower self taking over because once you bust that nut with that big girl, you're going to be like, damn, what the fuck was I thinking? What was I doing? You see what I'm saying? So when you aren't feeling good or you feel as if you need someone, that is your lower self trying to wake you up. It's like the devil trying to tell you like, yo, you need that person. You need her. You need him. You need you need, you need all of these people. You need their validation. You need to go, you know what I'm saying, seek validation. No, no, you are fulfilled from within. You are one with Jesus Christ. You have him within you. So you are whole regardless. And I understand this because people are not conscious of this. They'll still go into my comments and still like talk about all of this negative shit that, oh, I can't control myself. It is a battle between you and you. It's only you and you. If you can control your lust, that's a battle between your lower self and your higher self. Every time you control your lust, that is your higher self winning. You see what I'm saying? It's like the good side. Jesus is like giving you a high five. Like, yo, good shit. While the devil, if you bust a nut, he laughing at you. Like, yeah, you fell to me. You see what I'm saying? Very hard. Emotions are the hardest things to control because it infiltrates you. One minute of the day, you're happy. You know what I'm saying? You're driving through your town. You're listening to good music. And then you get a phone call that your best friend died or your family member died. And you're heartbroken instantly. Your emotions slowly go back down. That is hard to control. Hard to see the good within the bad during situations of heartbreak and people dying around you or feeling as if you're not feeling good. That is when faith comes in. This is where, this is so good. I, I love what I'm talking about. This is where faith comes in. The same way that we don't see Jesus, but we believe in him is the same way that you have to believe in yourself. That when you're not feeling good or you're feeling lonely or you're feeling scared or you're feeling anxious, that is your lower self. You have to have faith even when outer things in your life hasn't changed like for example if you're sad you still got to walk with your head all high your chest up your shoulders back if you are uncertain of yourself you still got to walk with confidence because that is who you truly are but if i walked around all scared and sad that oh i'm sad now i don't give a fuck about none of that i'm not walking like that i'm him i don't need anyone to make me feel whole because why would i give that power to someone else to make me feel whole why I have God with me. He didn't create us for that. Think about it like this. When you were a kid and you got like A's and B's, right? This is something I see my family members experience because I was a C, D, and F type student. I'm not going to lie to you. But I always seen them go out and get praise for getting A's and B's. And they need, they're needing like their parents' approval or people's approval to think that they're smart. It didn't matter that I had C, D's, and F and that I didn't get approval because 
I didn't care. I knew Patrick was smart. I knew who he was. I know the knowledge he got, and I know who he is. It's just I fell asleep in class. I was a knucklehead. I was suspended every week, and I never did homework, and that's why my grades were lower. But the kids who got the validation, they still need that. It feels as if they're doing something good, but they don't really know themselves. It's the A's and B's, and they're like, oh, yeah, by this letter, it's making me feel a certain type of way that I feel good because I passed the test. I'm feeling some certain type of way. I, if I fail the test right now, I don't care. I'm still Patrick. I'm still smart. I'm still, you know what I'm saying, who I am, even though I failed this test. If this girl left me, I'm still Patrick, even though I'm not feeling like him. You see what I'm saying? I'm not feeling the best because this was my lover of 10 years, say, for example, and she left me. These are very hard emotions to control. But once you have a grasp of them and you understand that you're not your thoughts, you're only your higher thoughts, but you have your lower thoughts to control as well. Lower thoughts feeling as if you're lonely. Lower thoughts feeling that you're anxious. Lower thoughts that you're feeling you're depressed. Lower thoughts that you're feeling negative about yourself. Identify them and switch them to the higher thoughts because that's the only way you should live anyways. That you see the good within the bad. You see what I'm saying? And since the projection of your re of your reality hasn't changed, you have to have that faith that you have in God. The same way we don't see Jesus but we believe in him is the same way that you have to believe in yourself. That when you're not feeling good or you're feeling lonely or you're feeling scared or you're feeling anxious, that is your lower self. You have to have faith even when outer things in your life hasn't changed. You know what I'm saying? Like we never seen Jesus. We never seen the, the miracles or anything like that, but we believe it. We have to have that same faith in ourselves that we are great with or without someone. We don't need anyone to make us feel good. We have God with us. It's okay. And it's not bad to say that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not giving my my happiness in order for someone else to make me happy. No. You know what I'm saying? Like if a shorty or someone came around the way and said, hey, Patrick, your hair looks really nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. You look good as well or something. Like, I'll say something along the lines of that. But I didn't need it regardless. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm going to get that compliment anyways because I know my hair looks good. But I already know since I looked in the mirror and I'm seeing myself through this camera like, yeah, Patrick, your hair does look nice. I like it. But I got that from me. I don't need anyone else to validate me. I love this human vessel. So even if I don't get... You know what I'm saying? Compliments from people or love from people or maybe I didn't get this girl's number or something like that. Bitch, I'm still Patrick. Like, the fuck is you talking about? Okay, that's a big thing too. I know a lot of guys who will go up to a shorty and not get her number and feel dep depressed, sad, and everything like that and feel negative about themselves. Why? She missed out on greatness. She missed out on who you are. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're great with from the inside. You don't, I don't need a girl to make me feel happy. That's where you got to really wake up to your divine nature that generally you don't need anyone. The people that you come in your life should be the people that you attract, that are attracted to you, that are likewise with you. People who hit the gym, who smell good, who look good, who take care of themselves, who are aligned with you. Those are the people that you should want around the way. And if the people who don't want you around the way, that's fine too. That's perfectly okay. If people don't like Patrick for being Patrick, that's fine. I wish you the very best because I am Patrick and I'm not Johnny or I'm not Jason or I'm not this person. I am Patrick. You will start to get a lot more compliments because you are so competent and you love yourself that you don't need anyone else to love you, but you get the love. That's the laws of the universe. The love comes to you because you feel love and people are attracted to that and you also show love. You know what I'm saying? Once you're really able to love yourself and show love to people, you don't even want other people to feel negative about themselves. I'm telling you this right now. Like, there's certain things that I hold my tongue on because I'd rather not that person feel sorry or, or feel negative about themselves because they don't know a lot of this information. They don't know a lot of this shit. So if I were to hit them with some some games, some real facts, they're going to be there distraught or confused or feeling negative about themselves. When I'd rather that human feel uplifted and being better about themselves. So I'll, I'll bite my tongue on this situation on whatever we're talking about. I want that person to feel uplifted. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell them lies, though. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to uplift that person to recognize their greatness because in God's eyes, for the rich higher than the homeless, he doesn't see that. He sees them as equal. So when I go throughout my way, and not saying that, you know what I'm saying, I'm to the levels of Jesus because we're all human, and, and Jesus was human, but he was like the perfect human. I see like homeless people, and I see them as equal. I, I'm no better. Even if I come, when, when I do come through with the Corvette and I see a homeless person, it's like, I still see you as one. We're human. It, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. You're black, Asian, green, yellow, white, Puerto Rican, black, whatever. You're still equal with me. We are human. You see what I'm saying? And in the hierarchy of life, the materialistic world, yeah, a lot of people will see 
homeless people down here and rich people up here. But in the God, in a God's eyes, we are all equal. We're all children of God. So I have to respect you. I have to see you as equal because I don't, I don't want to disrespect you. I'm not going to think anything less of you. I'm going to lead with love. I'm going to show that homeless person the same love I will show a, a, a rich person. I won't despise that person. And that is beautiful. So once you're able to love yourself, you don't need validation from anyone. You don't need it because you already love yourself. I look into the mirror. I'm like, damn, I'm really him. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I go and show love to people and they show the love back. But even then, once you show a lot of love within your life, a lot of people show it out of nowhere. Like they just come showing you love. Um, trying to like, you know what I'm saying? Dab you up. A lot of people try to, uh, they just give me compliments about how I look. Like the other day I was at Wawa. I just walked in to get a coffee. It was kind of like the weirdest compliment I think I ever gotten. So I I'll tell you that briefly. I'm just walking in to go get a coffee real fast. And the woman was there. She was like, are you a scorpion? Or, or I said a scorpion. <laughs> she was like, are you a scorpio? And I was like, nah. And I smiled at the lady. What makes you think I'm a scorpio? I'm a Gemini. And she's like, you could just remind me of a Scorpio. You look good like a Scorpio. I said, what? Like, I, I didn't even think, like, I, I'm thinking in my head, like, what the fuck does that even mean? She said, I look good like a Scorpio. What does a Scorpio look like? Like, or, or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's talking about the, the, the months of the year thing. I'm like, nah, I'm a Gemini. And I introduced myself, I asked her, her name, everything like that. And I smiled and walk away and everything. But I was like, I look good like a Scorpio. What does that mean? <laughs> like, I'm sitting there as I go to my car. I'm like, what? Hold on. What the fuck? Like, what does that mean, bro? But like, this happens out of nowhere. I'm just getting coffee. And the lady just comes and I, I, you look as good as a Scorpio or you look like a, like, you look good like a Scorpio. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm a Gemini. I'm like, I'm a Gemini, but I'll take the compliment. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look good. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? But I already knew that from the moment I walked in. So it leads with that confidence. Like I walk in the cut. When I tell you I walk through the cut, everybody looking at me is because you're confident and you love yourself and you're not in no self-centered shit. Like if someone were to like, she says something weird as that, I'm not going to be like, oh, what the fuck does that mean or anything like that? I was like, oh, okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Even though I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like you just show love to the people regardless. And she was just a woman working at Wawa. You know what I'm saying? Like it didn't matter if she was homeless or whatever, I'm going to take the compliment regardless because I'm not going to disdain the homeless person. I see them as equal. Once you're able to love yourself, you see all of them as equal. You see all humans as equal, no matter if they're fat, they're ugly, they're this, they're that. It's like, I, I don't know, bro. I don't want to assume anything, but I feel as if I'm living through my heart chakra or some shit. Like, I don't know what the fuck going on, but I'm just loving everybody no matter what. I show respect, I get respect. I show love, I get love. It's like, it's like you don't even want other people to feel negative about themselves. Like, even with jokes, the only people I really joke with is my homies. And it's not like, you look like this or you ugly as shit like this. It's actually like, just some dumb shit, like some funny shit, but dumb shit, but it doesn't hinder us. You see what I'm saying? So I love y'all, bro. You know what I'm saying? You do not need anyone for validation. You have yourself. You have God. You are great from within, and that's that. You see what I'm saying? So I love y'all, bro. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to leave my last video right here for you guys. So if you missed the point that, go watch this video. So stay yourself. Stay 300. And whatever you're doing, like, trust me, I believe you, bro.